Welcome to Development Dynamics with Maxi, another very great season. We are lucky this time to be hosted at Uluwazi Place, which is off Kirawa Road in the very secure neighborhood of Kitusuru. Uluwazi, we are grateful that you could be hosting us for this meeting. And we'll take you around for you to see this, this place and the amenities that they have. But also very, very greatly uh, this time around, we at Development Dynamics where we are doing storytelling for social impact with leaders and practitioners in the development field. We are lucky and privileged to have a great and very inspirational. Um, now, if I say young woman, <laughs> I'll probably be uh, held accountable to this. But yes, young woman who is on the who is um, a lead, a certified leadership coach. Um, she is, um, has received several recognitions for her commitment to youth and women empowerment, to democracy and, and good governance. The things that we have been focusing on here at Development Dynamics. Um, in 2018, this young woman met the 44th president of the United States of America, President Barack Obama, who recognized her and her work of Emerging Young Leaders Foundation, where currently, where she founded and she's currently the executive director at. It's an organization that nurtures the next generation of ethical leaders for Africa's transformation, a conversation that we are truly going to have together. She wears many hats, um, and we are going to hear all about those, but she was also awarded the most influential woman in business and government, at least in the civil society and welfare category in East Africa by CEO Global. And she's also been profiled by um, various outlets, uh, media outlets, especially in context of uh, influential women in the development space. Her name is Karen Wakoli. As I say, uh, I cannot do full justice to her full introduction at the very beginning, but that is why Development Dynamics with Maxi exists, because we provide this avenue to get to the in-depth of the individuals who sit on this particular hot seat, so it were. So as we focus and move the camera onto our guest, Karen, welcome. Thank you. To Development Dynamics with Maxi. Thank you so very, much. Very, very glad that you could make it. So glad to be here. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. And, uh, you know, we were starting off by saying, I'm not so sure I could, I can call you young because you just made a revelation that shook me uh, to my core and uh, it, it really has shaken me to my core. You are young, but also not as young. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. Yeah. I, I, I am happy to, to know you. Here, I like, to, I, I like us to begin with where it all began. And for most, in, in most other conversations where people are doing documentaries, uh, at times people say where it all began is perhaps where you met your purpose. No, for mm -hmm. me, where it all began is your roots and your roots are not necessarily even birth it's where yeah. does karen come from what, what what are your roots what what are your origins as it were so when you're to trace your roots where how far do they go back to if you're to do that um th th that family history that's very interesting but how i will choose to respond to your question mm -hmm. is my roots are in bungoma county Aha. i was born and bred in bungoma county right. My life was shaped and grounded in Bungoma County. Mm -hmm. It is where I call home. Mm. It's the place that shaped who I am today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know the particular location? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's let's let, let's let's pay homage. Uh -huh. Okay. So I was born at a place called Lugulu. Lugulu. Yes. Lugulu in in Bungoma, Bungoma County. Right. Uh, and it also so happens that uh -huh. I went to a high school called uh -huh. Lugulu Girls High School. All right. Yeah. We will get to Lugulu Girls yeah. much later in your story. Okay. So Lugulu, it was, was that like the ho particular hospital? Yes. Lugulu Hospital. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's in Lugulu Village. 
is that a village? I just want I I want us to hone in there. <laughs> Lugulu village. Um, it's a locality. locality. So yeah, yeah, we could say a village. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, into the kind of uh, into so um, what's your what's your home into the Wakoli family? Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Comprised of. Of very many children. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> very we're, many. we're quite a number. Uh-huh. And I'm the eldest. Oh, so you're a firstborn? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. And and so um uh both mom and dad so I, that's why that that's where you um you you're growing up in in, in Bungoma County. In in Bungoma County. Yes. Your dad and mom what who, who are they are they are they farmers there? Are they? Are they? Uh, what, what was their occupation? So my mom mm-hmm. was the secretary to the chief right. in Kandui. Kandui mm-hmm. is in Bungoma. It's a constituency in Bungoma. Right. And right now she does farming. Okay. And my father was a court clerk. Uh-huh. He worked in so many parts of the country in different courts. Yeah. Uh, Bungoma, Webuye. Uh-huh. Kimilili, Mombasa, Lodua, Kitale, oh. Busia, yeah. Machakos, oh. all those places, right. I think, as is um, the trend with public servants. Yes. And then he retired from Kimilili Law Courts. Yeah. And right now he's working for a law firm. Okay. Yes. Did he, did a lot of that movement, did it cause you guys to move or were no. you? No. So you, you guys were situated there? Yes, and, in Bungoma. In Bungoma. Yes. Uh, what kind of firstborn were you at the time? <laughs> That's a an interesting question. Uh-huh. I would see a very responsible firstborn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, directing your siblings. Uh, in, yes. Uh-huh. And I remember at some point, mm-hmm. my parents would then ask me to be the disciplinarian mm-hmm. in the family, mm. and I would take a whip and mm. you know uh, discipline. <laughs> yes, my younger siblings. Yeah. Till one day, I didn't know. They were grown up. Yeah. Till one day, one of my sisters made a mistake, and so I was called upon, and I took my kawip and went and tried to whip her. Wow. And she took off and ran away, and I followed her, ran after her. Yeah. But then she just turned around and took the whip and actually whipped me. Oh, whipped you <laughs> yes, back? Yes, like yes. Yeah, you're not and my parent. Th- that's when I discovered, oh my goodness, these guys are now grown-ups. Grown like, ups, I can't yeah. do this anymore. Yeah. We need to have conversations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow, wow. I want to hear more of that. But still still a little bit of your your very early childhood. Um, what do you remember about... So, first of all, what's the gap like between yourself and your other siblings? Um, for some, it's two years, yeah. one year, three yeah. years, four years, okay. five years. All yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. And 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 your, so, you are, you you go to school in, uh, you at what point do you break into early, primary or early even childhood? Do you go? Do you do those early childhood education? Not quite. Not quite. Yeah. You just, just nursery school yeah. and then now. Okay, nursery yeah. school and then primary yes, school. Yes. Where is your primary school at? Bungoma. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Bungoma DB Primary School. DB. Yes. DB form. DEB. Oh, DEB. District Education, education Board. Board. <laughs> yes. Okay. Ah, DB Primary yeah. School. Ah. Yeah. The, the entire primary school. Yes. Class one to class eight. Yes. Yes. Ah. Yes. Then at some point I moved to Kibabi Boarding Primary. Yeah. Then now Lugulu, then moved to Nairobi for college education. DB. Let's let's focus on DB. What are your memories of DB? DB. <laughs> wow, that's that's a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember many things. Yeah. I remember going to school. Mm-hmm playing games, enjoying the games. Mm. I remember protecting my younger siblings, siblings yeah. from bullies. Yeah. I would then be called upon and, you know, I'd fight guys yeah. to just protect them. Yeah. Um, I remember being sent home for school fees. Oh, oh wow. I remember days when I would wake up and go to the river to fetch water. Yeah. Uh, before going to school yeah. and during planting seasons yeah. and weeding seasons, I would remember waking up, going to the farm, Ooh. Lima, and mm. then now go to school yeah. after that or over the weekends, yeah. just continue till maybe around 11 in the morning. Yeah. 
um, I remember having interesting conversations with mom and dad mm. and siblings. I remember transitions. Um, what do you mean in, by transitions? In, in, in life. Yeah. Uh, like moving from uh, one house to, to another. another. Yeah. Um, yeah, quite, stuff like that. Quite an eventful um, sort of early first eight, seven, eight years. Yes. Yeah. Did you do the eight years, eight for four? Or did you do? Yes, the, yes, yes. Of course. Yeah. Of you, course. You eight for four. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> yeah. You never know. All right. Uh, that's that. But that's quite a pretty eventful um, um, childhood. Yeah, childhood and. Um, what what's forming inside of you at the time? You know, what kind of sort of like character traits is wow. are, are forming inside of the you? The biggest the is mm. responsibility. Mm. I took up responsibility at a very young age. Yeah. Taking care of my siblings, protecting my siblings. Mm. Um and it it's really interesting that my childhood shaped my work and my vocation now. Mm -hmm guiding young people, working with young people, supporting, coaching, mentoring young people. Mm. I used to do it when I was mm. when you a young. little girl. Yeah. I didn't even know mm. that that was mm. mentorship or coaching. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. And and at that time, I mean, they say charity begins at home. So it was happening right at your, you know, right at your footsteps, right there at, at, at the door front of, yes. your, of, of your home. Yes. And, and who's guiding you the most at the time? I would say both mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Dad was more the disciplinarian in the family mm -hmm. and he loved reading. So mm -hmm. he would make sure, like during school holidays, gives us newspapers. Every single day had its own papers and tells us, uh, read this paper, capture at least five stories, get at least five vocabularies. When I come back in the evening, you will tell me the stories, the vocabularies, and you know all that stuff and give us books to read and then tell us to summarize, you know, um, while public speaking. That that used to be interesting and I love reading and that is as a result of what my father used to do. And he used to really encourage us to read and read and read. My mom, on the other hand, um, was and is still very prayerful. I remember many times, like we even almost formed a song. Um, she would always say, God will provide. Even in moments and times when there'd be no food at home, there'd be no school fees. You guys have been sent home um, because you, there's no school fees and, and all this lack. You, you can see it. Mom would still say, don't worry, God will provide. So moments came when even for me running my organization, Moments have come when I have used that phrase, you know what, God will provide. And yes, God did provide then, he still provides. Hmm. Yeah. That's that's very profound and that's a good balance of, you know, from, from parents and good uh, um, guidance that you're receiving in, in, in that regard from, from, from both of them. And, um, and, and in terms of school, what kind of student are you in, in school? <sighs> that's, I think, for, for, for primary school at the primary school mm. Mm. <laughs> of course at jail i was a i was a really really great student yeah but but <laughs> but the truth the truth of diplomacy we want the truth anyway uh, yeah what are your fondest memories in in, in 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 school as a student as a pupil so i was a prefect mm -hmm. all through mm -hmm. Um, my lower primary, I think I really struggled because then as a family, we moved from Webuye to Bungoma, then um, changed schools. Mm -hmm. And so um, I remember being moved to, I think, class two, then went to class three, rewound with class three, then class four. Mm. So I think the early part of primary education was a bit of a challenge mm. for me. Mm. Uh, but then later on, as I got into class four, five, mm. something just, I don't know what happened, but something just happened and I picked up very well. Mm. I started enjoying education. Right. Um, and I think it had also been drummed in me by especially my father that, you know what? Education is the key out of poverty. Right. And education will, will enable you to get yourself and your family out of poverty. So when you get a chance to go to school, 
give it your all. Mm. So I think that messaging also then shaped mm. how I focused on education mm. and what I was able to achieve out mm. of education. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. And, and, and so you, and, and uh, extracurricular, what were you doing? Oh, yeah. Mm. I was, um, <laughs> so I used to run 100 meters. Oh. Although, all through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I used to run 100 meters. Yeah. I used to be a goalkeeper right. for handball mm -hmm. and football. Mm -hmm. I really used to enjoy. Mm. By the way, why don't I play hand? Okay, there are no clubs for adults outside of school. Mm. Um, but I really used to enjoy mm. goalkeeping. Mm -hmm. mm, goalkeeping. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow, fantastic. Oh, and I used to sing in the choir. Ah, what? Yes. What? What? what uh, soprano. Soprano. Some moments alto. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Any favorite song you remember? <laughs> wow. No, not at the moment. <laughs> but once in a while, I, I do sing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice, nice. So you clear um, some time in the 90s, early 90s, yeah. you clear your primary school mm -hmm. in DEB? Um, Kibabi. Kibabi. Kibabi is where you came to clear Girls from. boarding, yeah. Ah. Oh, yeah. so you actually boarded? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? At some point. How was the boarding experience? Oh, it was lovely. It was, it was nice. Independence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was really interesting. I think um, that was the beginning of me sort of living life away from my family. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm. it was it was interesting. Mm. Did you feel the um, separation from family? Not quite, because mm. we used to have visiting days mm -hmm. and my school wasn't so far away from my home. So, yeah, my mom would come, my dad would come, my siblings would mm. come visit. Mm. Yeah. And, and how would those moments be? Oh, lovely. Interesting. Mm. But the in, one of the most interesting things things um, is that I started questioning a few things. Mm -hmm. My parents would come visiting with uh, like a paper bag full of, so many parents would carry lots of shopping for mm -hmm. their kids. Mm -hmm. So my parents would also come with a paper bag with fruits. We used to have so many fruits mm -hmm. in, in our homestead, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. avocado, guavas, mm. mangoes, whatever, you know, all mm. those. Mm. So they come with that and then they tell me, so Karen, this is what you were able to bring. So you can trade in with your friends who don't have this for you to get like juice, sugar, and you know, whatever you need that you don't have. That's interesting. Yeah. And you would do that? Yes, of course I mm -hmm. would do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I started noticing disparities. There are those parents who would come with lots of shopping, a whole pickup of shopping, much more than what their kids needed. And some would come with very little, some would, would carry nothing but bring themselves in their love. Mm. Um, yeah, so I think that's when I started questioning, how come some people have almost Everything. more than enough mm. while others are barely mm. surviving? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And those are crucial questions to the, mm -hmm. the, your consciousness is starting to arise in, yes. in, um, in the different spaces, yeah. in the different, in life, uh, around uh, in, in, inequality. Yes, yeah? yes. Yeah, and uh, all right, very, very nice. Um, so this is in boarding, boarding class school. Se six, seven, eight? Uh, eight. Class eight. Yes. All right.